there, um, my name is Kristen Richman. I am the Volunteer Engagement Manager with 365 Health. Um, first, I just wanna say thank you for volunteering for your local health fair. Um, this is a crucial community resource, resource and it's volunteers like you who are truly what make it possible, especially medical volunteers. So um, this video is for the medical registration educator. So this position takes place in the registration area, the on-site registration area of every health fair. Um, and the purpose is to make sure that participants that are registering for blood work at the health fair can truly understand the blood screenings that are available to them and they can make the right decision about which screenings are right for them, which ones they wanna purchase today. So um, that is your purpose, to help them, guide them through those decisions. So um, <clears throat> there is a protocol that will be given to you when you check in, um, because typically at a health fair, the medical registration educator doesn't have a specific table because you are really meant to float through the registration tables where folks are sitting down to write on the on-site registration paperwork. They're gonna be filling this out. They're gonna be marking an X next to the screenings they want. Um, so that's your purpose. You're there to help them choose which ones to purchase. Um, on each of the screening, or on each of the tables, there will be this document. It's called, Which Screenings Are Right For You? Um, so this document um, details every single lab option that we have at the health fair. The only non-blood work one is the colon cancer screening kit. Um, it should be mentioned that your health fair most likely has a colon cancer educator who will also be right there in the registration area. Um, if there is that volunteer at your health fair, I want you guys or you both to introduce yourself to each other and I would love for you to work together to support participants in the registration area. Um, whether it's with the general screenings or helping them decide if they are at risk for developing colon cancer. Um, if, if there is not a colon cancer educator at your health fair, you will kind of assume those duties along with your own. So I'll get into what that means in just a minute. So um, you're gonna get there, you're gonna familiarize yourself with the protocol, go ahead and pick up you know, a requisition form, familiarize yourself with it, and familiarize yourself with the what screenings are right for you sheet. Now, if you have volunteered at a health fair um, before spring of 2023, you're probably gonna remember that these names of the tests didn't always match the names on the requisition form. This has been fixed, so it will be easier for you and the participants to determine which of these screenings and correlate it with the screening that's listed on the sheet. So familiarize yourself, this is English and Spanish, double-sided, um, so really you're just meant to have conversation um, we definitely, you know, sometimes participants come in with a requisition form or a request form for blood work from their doctor, and they want you to kind of match up based on what the doctor ordered with what screenings that we have at the health fair. So that's a common scenario. Um, so ultimately, just use your best judgment. If there's someone in the area, whether it's the medical education and referral station, sometimes those volunteers will start as medical registration educators in the morning because people haven't gone through the blood work yet, they haven't gotten to that station, so they likely have little to do right at the beginning of the fair. So they might be coming over, helping you in this area, but we just wanna make sure that if, you, if there's a question that you're asked and you are not sure of the answer, please don't feel obligated to give them an answer if you don't know. We definitely wanna make sure that at all points we are giving participants correct medical knowledge. So if there is someone there that has a higher credential or maybe their specialty is in that area where the person's asking their question, you know, get to know the other medical volunteers or go and find the medical coordinator for the actual health fair planning team. Um, ultimately, there are a plethora of people that can help um, answer questions in this area if you um, feel unqualified to do so. Um, so 
The other, a couple important things. So um, some health fairs, particularly in the metro area, also are able to add on a rheumatoid arthritis, or excuse me, rheumatoid arthritis screening. Um, so you don't have to worry about this requisition form. I just wanted you to be familiar. There will be a representative from the CU and shoot center um, with these forms, helping people register. But you know, in your conversations, you can always mention it. Hey, have you seen the rheumatoid arthritis lady? Go ahead and head over there. It's a free blood screening. Um, they just have to consent to being part of a national research study that's actually doing a lot to help us learn more about rheumatoid arthritis. So it's a really great opportunity if that um, offering is at your health fair. Um, additionally, it's important for the medical registration um, educator to be aware of vouchers. Um, so each health fair typically has um, vouchers for a free blood screen. Oftentimes, it's the blood chemistry screening. Um, it's our most popular blood screening. It gives us 28 levels of, inf of information from thyroid to kidney health to liver to heart health, electrolytes, and so on. So um, if you're talking with a participant and they are giving you indicators that budget might be a concern or at least part of their thought process or, oh, you know, I'd like to do all three, but I only have you know, the budget for one or two of them, be listening to that language. And, and first and foremost, we want to empathize with them. Um, you know, we understand and we want to make sure as a nonprofit, as a community offering, that we're able to help as many people as possible. So please come to that conversation with that perspective, but also be aware of what vouchers are available at your health fair. That way, when you hear that language, you can provide them with a voucher. Oftentimes the vouchers are given to the cashier station. So you simply need to tell the participant, hey, you know, we have a voucher for ble free blood chemistry screenings today. When you reach the cashier station, ask them for a voucher. Um, they will happily give it to them and process it right there. Take that price off the amount that they pay. Um, um, most sites only have a specific number of blood chemistry vouchers, so keep in communication with the cashier station if they run out. Um, that's typically it. Every once in a while, a 365 Health staff member might have more that we could provide, but um, these are a first come, first serve basis, so just be in communication with other volunteers at the fair. Um, and finally, at a lot of our fairs, through a partnership with the CU Cancer Center, we are able to provide some participants with free colon cancer screening kits through a different voucher. Um, so if they want, if you know a participant needs both vouchers, there's no limit to the vouchers that they can use, so they could use both um, if that was available to them and available at your health fair. Um, so typically if you have a colon cancer educator at your fair, they will have these vouchers. Um, if they don't have these or you don't have an educator at your fair, um, they could be given to you or they could be, again, housed at cashiering. So the important thing to note about this is there are questions to determine risk factors for colon education or colon cancer. So if you know those or if you have access to their protocol with the questions in there, go ahead and run through those with participants. Ask uh, your site coordinator or medical coordinator if you have any questions about this. Um, but ultimately, there's also a voucher. The really cool thing about this partnership with the CU Cancer Center is not only, you know, if they meet the criterion of, you know, above 45, they have inequitable access or they're from a, a group that historically has a higher chance of getting colon cancer or developing colon cancer. Um, we want to make sure that those people are getting these vouchers. So. The great thing about this partnership is the CU Cancer Center, if they meet those criteria, are gonna help with the follow-up care if they have a positive test result, meaning they need further evaluation. Um, so on the back of this particular voucher, um, there's information that they need to fill out, whether it's age, phone number, contact information, their name, signing it, and then you or the colon cancer educator or someone at the cashier station needs to sign as a witness. This is just consenting that we can contact them um, through the CU Cancer Center and provide that follow-up care. So because it's their personal health information, we wanna make sure that we have a second consent 
to do that. So that's what the back of this voucher is for. Please don't um, let them forget to fill it out. It is a crucial step um, in order for them to get the free colon cancer screening kit. So ultimately you're there to be a medical resource for participants and work alongside the other medical volunteers in the area and at the health fair to ultimately provide um, the most seamless um, experience for participants going through the health fair. So thank you for volunteering.